untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red control deck built around Visions of Phyrexia as its main card draw engine. A four man enchantment from the Brothers War says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library and then you may play that card this turn. That also includes lands. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we did not play a card from exile this turn, we get to create a tapped power stone token. So that can help us cast our expensive artifacts or maybe activate abilities. And as you can see, all the top end cards in this deck are artifacts, so those Power Stone tokens will certainly come in handy. Now the cool thing about Visions that I did not realize at first is that at the very same turn where we played Visions, we will already get a Power Stone token end of turn, even though we did not exile any cards with it at the beginning of our upkeep, so that will immediately give us a nice mana boost to set up our future turns. And then if we have multiple copies of Visions in play, we do have to be a little bit careful, because let's say we played one card from Exile from one Visions, but not the other, then end of turn we still don't get any Power Stone tokens whatsoever, because again it checks whether or not in general we cast any cards from Exile. So that's just a small side note. But yeah, Visions is an awesome card draw engine in a control strategy where we can make sure to answer all the opponent's creatures with our various removal spells and sweepers. And Brotherhood's End is very useful there as well, dealing 3 damage to each creature and each planeswalker as well. Can also destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less, although I don't envision using that mode very often. And then at 5 mana we also have 2 copies of Burn Down the House to deal 5 to each creature and each planeswalker. And if we happen to exile it with a Visions of Phyrexia and let's say the opponent does not have any creatures on the battle, Field, we can at least still make 3 1 1 devil tokens that can deal 1 damage to any target when they die. And then we have more spot removal with Voltage Surge, can deal 2 damage or 4 damage if we sacrifice an artifact. So another great use of our Power Stone tokens. We've got a Braid to deal 3 damage to a creature or destroy an artifact, since we already have plenty of ways to damage Planeswalkers. And being able to deal with artifacts, especially opposing copies of Bankbuster for instance, can certainly come in handy. And since we're a control strategy, we don't care about a card like a Lightning Strike to deal damage to the opponent directly. We would much rather have answers to their permanence and then let the card draw from Visions and Bankbuster pull us ahead. And of course Bankbuster another great addition to this strategy where we will be answering most of the opponent's board and then we will eventually need to refuel by drawing extra cards and then eventually get a pilot token as well which will help us crew the Bankbuster to help us close out the game because as you may have noticed we don't have very many creatures in our main deck. In fact we only have the two copies of Cityscape Leveler as an eventual win condition an 8-8 Trampler when we cast it or when it attacks can destroy up to one target non-land permanent and its controller creates a tapped power stone token can also unearth it for eight mana to attack one last time so that can be a nice answer to enchantments for instance which mono red otherwise struggles to answer we also have two copies of blast stone in the mana base which can maybe blow up opposing enchantments and we can slowly tick it up to eventually destroy all permanents with the same mana value we also have four copies of mishra's foundry in our mana base which is another one of our win conditions can turn it into a 2-2 creature if we draw multiples can maybe also pump other copies of Foundry to give those plus two plus two. And the Foundry is also a great way to crew maybe our unlicensed hearse, which can act as a graveyard hate. Plenty of graveyard synergies in standard that the hearse can keep in check. Cards like Tenacious Underdog, which could otherwise come back and draw more cards. We've got Unearth creatures, and then very important also against the Mono Blue Hoddy Jin decks, which don't necessarily have a lot of creatures in the graveyard, but they do rely on having lots of instants and sorceries to power up Hoddy Jin and to discount Tolarian Terror. So the unlicensed hearse can make it very difficult for the mono blue deck to beat us since we can just keep their haughty gin at zero power and make their tolarian terror cost seven mana and then once the opponent has to tap out for it we have plenty of answers with our burn down the house or maybe we get to nine mana for a portal to phyrexia which will make the opponent sacrifice three creatures and then at the beginning of our upkeep we can put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control and it also turns into a phyrexian so there's a little bit of tension between portal and hearse but we're still very happy to have the two mana vehicle and then we can as we said crew hearse with Mishra's foundry so it can actually start attacking and close out the game in a few attacks once we make it large enough and then portal to Phyrexia another win condition since it can turn the opponent's creatures against them and then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Rending Flame to deal 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker, perfect for answering Haughty Jin or Tolarian Terror, but can also take out Shieldred even in our upkeep before we take a draw step and lose 2 life. 
And then we can also answer Shield Root with a Might Stone and Weak Stone. When it enters, can give a creature minus five, minus five until end of turn. Or we can draw two cards, and then afterwards it will act as a nice Power Stone, making double colorless that we can spend on activated abilities or artifacts. So playing a Might Stone and Weak Stone still lets us maybe play or activate a Reckoner Bankbuster in the same turn, which is always very efficient. And then two copies of the Celestis as an extra ramp artifact can also give us a bit of card selection and maybe gain some life, which will come in handy. And uh, yeah, I think that covers most of it. One Crucible, which can also make two 1-1 one -one Spirits, which can maybe help us crew or chum block where needed, and just 17 basic Mountains. So the advantage of staying mono red is that we get to play all these extra utility lands, which would be much harder to fit into a two-color mana base. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems promising. Celestus can set up a turn four, burn down the house if necessary. Opponent on a white soldier deck, so our sweepers should be quite useful. Turn to Thalia is going to slow us down. So now we'll need a fourth line to cast our Brotherhood's End. But there it is, so that should catch us back up. Take four. And our opponent commits another officer to the board. They might have reinforcements available in hand. So, yeah, I think that's fine. We'll cast our Brotherhood's End. And then next turn we can maybe go Celestis plus Voltage Surge. Or get our Visions going. Double frontliner. Okay, so those represent four damage. And then abrade the draw. So yeah, we have a couple of options. Next turn I'm likely to cast Burn Down the House. So the only guaranteed way to do that is if I play Celestis right now. Although I'm less incentivized to cast a Voltage Surge then. But uh, you never know, opponent might play a Lord and then we might kill it before taking a bunch of damage. Not worried about the late game with this hand. So just need to make sure we don't take any unnecessary damage. Keeping instant speed removal for foundry could be valuable. So I'll hang on to a braid and voltage surge. Opponent passes. We'll do the same. And Celestus lets us draw and discard. And don't need double portal. Okay, so yeah, we could burn down the house already. And then I would still have Voltage Surge for Foundry. And then next turn I'll feel more comfortable playing Visions. Opponent has double Mishra's Foundry, so... They can put those to use for now, just unearths the frontliner times three. So that's six damage, unless we want to kill one of them and still have a braid for foundry. So we'll take four down to eight. And then next turn, visions keep up a braid, seems fine. Okay, so let's play it. And then even if the opponent pumps the foundry, we can still kill it by destroying an artifact instead. End of turn gets a power stone token, so we're close to casting our portal as well. So your opponent animates foundry. I can wait for them to pump. Or they're going to activate both. Fair enough. Okay, 
We also have our own foundry that can block. And then, for now, play Visions. And, yeah, I can play Hearse, or I can keep up the mana to animate Foundry, which is maybe better. Opponent animates. And attacks. Opponent might have a trick. I gancho, fair enough. Should still be able to find some instant speed removal eventually. Okay. So, can play Blast Zone and then Leveler as well. Not gonna blow up anything. Still a nice 8-8. Opponent might have a Brutal Cathar in hand to exile it, but that sets up our portal to Phyrexia nicely. Alright, opponent passes. Burn down the house can make Devil Tokens, which may be safer than playing Portal here. And I'll run out a Unlicensed Hearse. They could also have a Wandering Emperor in hand, which is a reason not to attack with a Cityscape Leveler. Until our opponent at least presents a target for it to destroy. And we're pretty happy with the direction this game is going, so we don't have to attack and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Early Voltage Surge and Rending Flame. Up against blue-white, so if it is control, having Bankbuster is great, as well as Visions. If it's soldiers, then the spot removal will come in handy. So let's try Bankbuster. That resolved. So do we want to play Celestus or draw with the Bankbuster? I think Celestus is fine. We'll make it more likely that we can play Visions next turn. So our opponent has to be on a control deck since they haven't played anything yet. And at the ferry who slows the sunset, luckily we can deal damage to planeswalkers with both Voltage Surge and Rending Flame. And I think Rending Flame seems like a clean solution here. Now the downside of Rending Flame is that I can't play Visions, but I'll still be able to draw with Bank Buster. And uh, I could wait until the opponent's upkeep, but then we risk the opponent having a counter spell. So let's just do it now. Waiting has the advantage of transforming it to Knight with the Celestus. Could also play Hearse, but I think I would prefer to hit my land drops early on with Bankbuster. Opponent could also be playing with Farewell, which uh, is a reason to get the most cards out of Bankbuster before that happens. And not play too many permanents to the board. Okay, Voltage Surge can probably go. So yeah, we could play Visions, but Farewell seems somewhat likely. So I think I prefer just passing and drawing with Bankbuster. Maybe a leveling of Blast soon. Eh, there's a Wandering Emperor. So we could abrade the token after they try and put a counter on it, but I should probably just Voltage Surge Emperor now. Take two. Yeah, that's fine. Not in a hurry to abrade. They might have an artifact we want to take out instead. And then I could still put one counter on Blast soon. Okay, 
Okay, so Mightstone and Weakstone can draw, and then we can still draw with a Bankbuster. That seems fine. So even if they have a Farewell, we at least got our value. And then Foundry will be a great win condition as well, against a more controlling strategy. Opponent's got a Silver Scrutiny for three. Can also expect them to have Silex to maybe blow up the board, which is something else we can abrade. And uh, yeah, we'll take it for now. Draw with Bankbuster. Find another braid. Okay. So yeah, let's say we crew Bankbuster attack. And see what happens. Bones gonna destroy evil, sure. And do we commit anything else to the board? Maybe hearse. Which I don't care too much if it gets removed. That point is going to counter. That's telling. So it probably means they don't have a uh, farewell in hand. So let's commit one visions at least. And pass. And discard mountain. Alright, there's the farewell after all. So let's level a blast zone on the way out, putting probably two charge counters on it. They did leave the creatures in play. Okay, so let's just try again. Probably could have left myself with double a braid available. There's the fairy again. That one we won't be able to damage with a braid. So it might be time to take out a samurai and attack with our creatures. Could also activate blast zone, but don't really want to lose my own visions. Voltage Surge and Brotherhood's End. So those could take out Teferi, although it does mean losing our pilot token. Could also try and bait out some more removal from the opponent by attacking with Mishra's Foundry. And let's see if that works. And then I think I only attack with one, and then maybe pump with the other. Although Voltage Surge would be able to finish off the Fairy, so maybe three damage is enough. I guess we'll Voltage Surge first and then reevaluate. That point's got the Wandering Emperor after all. That's fine. We'll see if they make a Samurai or Exile Foundry. Exile's Foundry, so now Brotherhood's End looks pretty good. We'll be able to finish off both Planeswalkers. Okay. Problem now is if our opponent finds another Silver Scrutiny or a big card draw effect. Bankbuster's nice. So yeah, I could commit Portal to Phyrexia. And uh, problem is there's virtually no creatures in this matchup. So it doesn't actually do anything. So play Bankbuster instead. Start drawing. Opponent's got the Scorn. Okay, I guess we'll attack with Foundry then. Okay. 
Mindstone and Tweak Stone's a good one. So play that. Draw two. And a leveler should also come in handy. So for now, again, attack with Foundry. And pass it back. Another portal. So... Yeah, I mean, I could play portal and then can eventually loop back Cityscape Leveler, I guess. Or it could bait the opponent into casting another Farewell. I think step one is still attack with Foundry. And then maybe I should play a Leveler just to get something else out there, but if Farewell happens it would get exiled, so that's not great. So let's see if Portal maybe baits something out. It does not. This opponent does not appear to have any instance in hand. Okay, can play another hearse, and then we can channel Crucible to start applying more pressure. And I guess we could do the Crucible end of turn. And pass. What to get rid of with Hearse is the question. Probably the Planeswalkers, which are the opponent's eventual win conditions in case they have a way of shuffling them back. Or I could go with Farewell and Silver Scrutiny, which are also quite dangerous. Okay, so we've got 24 cards remaining. Could also turn into a problem once we exile too many cards. But for now, Animate Foundry, attack for 4, and I'll keep exiling stuff with hers before crewing it. Even though we could play around Destroy Evil by keeping it small. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should commit to Cityscape Leveler. Kinda wanna wait for the opponent to present at least a Planeswalker for us to take out. Right, there's a depopulate, that's fine. And then now we'll go for Wandering Emperor, I think. Bangbuster is a good one. So, play Bangbuster. Opponent counters. And then do we try and crew hers now to hit for four? I think we can probably wait to make it a little bit bigger. And then let's say we animate Foundry and finally commit Leveler since our opponent seems to be out of action. And uh, yeah, we'll just play Leveler now. Could have also destroyed my own Might Stone and Weak Stone since we have a replacement just to get an extra Power Stone token out of the deal. So end of turn. Go for the Fairy. Okay, at least if our opponent tries to exile Leveler with Wandering Emperor, we can destroy it in response with a Braid. So now might be time to crew the hearse using Foundry. And this would be an attack for 14. So not quite lethal. And sure, I'll take out my own Mightstone and Weakstone now. One has got to Wandering Emperor. I hope you're ready to lose. Tries to exile Leveler. 
So we'll destroy it so we can also bring it back with portal. And still deal six. And then I think I'm still comfortable drawing two with Mightstone. Okay, and uh, do we want a Rending Flame Wandering Emperor before they can make a token? Or I can wait and then maybe abrade it instead? Sure. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we were lucky they couldn't find another big card draw effect to pull ahead. And our visions got there in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And yeah, against a creature deck, early removal into a sweeper is a good combination. And now Mightstone to ramp into portals, perfect. So hopefully see some creatures for us to take out. Missionary 2-3 will survive Voltage Surge. But Brotherhood's End will still be effective. Is our opponent on an Absalom deck? And a Graveyard Trespasser, that's fine. Brotherhood's End's the perfect answer to it. And yeah, I'll just cast it now. Don't think we need to get greedy. Keep our life total nice and high. The late game should favor us. Shield root, okay. Had I waited a turn, I would have been able to use Voltage Surge in combination with Brotherhood's End to take it out. But our Mightstone and Weakstone will still be a decent answer to it. But for now, we will take a bit of a beating, especially if we also want to draw with a Bankbuster. So take four. And another Trespasser. Okay, well, now what? Do I Voltage Surge, Trespasser, Sacrificing Bankbuster, discarding a Mountain, and then next turn go Mightstone, kill Shieldreds? We would be almost on empty, not having our card draw engine anymore. The alternative is draw with Bankbuster, essentially be at 8, Mightstone kills Shieldreds. But then we can pull ahead with a card advantage from Bankbuster. I think that's better. So I'm just going to draw now. Could also decline to draw. But maybe we'll find more sweepers here. Okay, Visions is good. So Mindstone kill Shieldreds. And then we'll still be under pressure from the Trespasser. And if they exile their creatures, our portal also gets a bit worse. But then next turn we can Voltage Surge. Soren goes digging for extra cards as well. Finds a go for the throat, pretty bad against us. And Trespasser does indeed exile Shieldred. Alright, so we're at three. Pretty sketchy. But no shortage of card advantage. And uh, for now, maybe draw with Bankbuster, which would also make a pilot and a treasure and see where we're at. Another Voltage Surge. Okay, so. We can kill the Trespasser before it gets a chance to attack. Or we could kill Sorin. Either way, I can play another Visions. Still cast double Voltage Surge, maybe sacking a Power Stone token. Probably should have tapped Mishra's Foundry here. So we'll go to End Step. Since now I'm going to be forced to sacrifice a Treasure token. Soren finds another Trespasser, okay. My Very well. And go for the throat kills our pilots. That happens. 
So voltage surge, trespasser. And at this point, probably a sacrifice power stone token. Discard land. And then next turn portal should be able to take care of the second trespasser. Brotherhood's End, also pretty clean solution here. So maybe we'll wait on Portal for a turn. Celestis could help us gain life, which is useful if Shieldred shows up again. And then we could Voltage Surge. And maybe uh, play another Visions. And then I can still end of turn Voltage Surge before Soren gets to untap. I guess Visions also keeps track of other Visions, so we didn't get an extra Power Stone token there. Alright, so we'll kill Sorin now. Probably let go of the Bank Buster. And I hope there's no Shieldred here. Evolve Sleeper's fine. Play portal. And pass it back. Maybe the safest play was activating Celestis to go up to three and then just killing the uh, evolved sleeper. Good thing we still have an abray to kill the samurai token. Let your blade do the talking. Opponent might have some spot removal in hand. And then uh Yeah, we'll see if Portal can stabilize us. Keep watch for intruders. One card left, announcement makes a token. And a Frex and Flash Gorger is a 3 3 with Menace and Lifelink. Okay. So, how about we grab a Trespasser? And Trespasser can exile probably Evolved Sleeper just to gain one life, since Sleeper's not going to be great if we get it back, anyways. Okay. Brotherhood's Ends. That will clean up the entire board, so that seems pretty good. And then play Hearse as well. Activate Celestis. And, uh, sure, we'll discard Voltage Surge, keep another Visions, and pass. Okay, so we're having fun. At five, we're not in immediate danger of dying. And we should be able to overpower the wedding announcements and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is a little curve heavy here, so could use more lands, but Brotherhood's End is a good catch-up mechanism, and so is Burn Down the House, so I'll give it a try. And against more mid-range hero control strategies, we'll have time to hit our land drops to get to visions. Ronin on one. Yeah, we'll kill that. It's going to be difficult to catch with our sorcery speed sweepers. Okay, so red aggro can be a tough matchup if we don't draw early interaction. But Brotherhood's End is one of our better answers. And Beast Caller. All right, so we're putting to red green instead. So do we want to cast our board wipe? I think we pass and then see what our opponent plays next. 
and either Rending Flame or take the damage to then next turn wipe the board. Okay, put on Teamer Colors. And what's it gonna be? Kodama. Yeah, that's a good combo with Beast Caller. So if we let them hit us, they get to search up a lands. I think that's acceptable. And then we'll just take the 2 for 1 with Brotherhood's ends and keep the Rending Flame for later. And hope to hit our next couple of land drops as well. The plus one counter is not going anywhere. Okay, five mana for a Sky Strike Officer. So opponent soldier tribal after all, maybe. Haven't seen many soldiers. Let's see if this resolves. And then we can slowly get to 8 mana for a leveler. Cannot cast Burn Out the House with our Power Stone token, but we're likely to draw an extra land along the way. Okay, Wormlet's good with artifact synergies and a Simulacrum. So I guess Officer making an artifact 1-1 one, one plays well with the Wormlet's. So yeah, this burn out the house is going to be very effective. But we did not find a land. So I guess now might have to rending flame the officer so we don't take too much damage. And then I can still play hearse either from hand or from exile. If I play the one from hand at least we'll get another power stone token which is maybe the preferred option. And Hearst will also be able to exile the Simulacrum, so it doesn't come back with an Earth. So we're taking five. At least. We have the option of maybe crewing Hearst with Mishra's Foundry as well in the future. For now, I think Exile Ronin and maybe Beast Caller keep the more interesting creatures to eventually get back with Portal to Phyrexia. I can also Exile my own stuff. Okay, Voltage Surge is good, and so is Mindstone and Weakstone. And uh, yeah, that will be able to cast both here. Although I kind of want to draw with Mindstone just to hit our land drops. And then I can still play Bangbuster with a 2 Power Stone mana. And Voltage Surge to maybe take care of the Wormlets. That works. So next turn I can just play my Leveler if I'd like. Three down to five. And a black market tycoon. More artifact synergy by making treasures. So opponent with an interesting Teamer Artifacts deck, Bushwhack, can find a land. And then sure we'll exile Bushwhack and Wormlets. I guess Wormlot does have a bit of synergy with our visions since we can make Power Stone tokens gain life, get extra counters. Well, probably want to wipe the board. And then we'll go for Leveler later. Would not have been able to play visions here, but we can draw with Bankbuster. Celestus helps, can kind of translate our artifact mana into colored mana. And we'll pass. And then in response to the Unearth, we can exile the Simulacrum. And 
and another simulacrum. So embarrassment of riches here. Probably just play a leveler. Destroy simulacrum. Add another bank buster to the board. And pass it back. Once again, if they try and unearth, we'll exile. Officer, we do need to kill. But we can do so with a leveler as well. We are potentially making our own portal to Phyrexia worse by exiling more creatures from their graveyard. But our opponent throws in the towel. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Early interaction into a card draw engine. And a bit of graveyard hit on top. Especially useful against a mono blue hottie gin deck. Which, yeah, turn one island could point in that direction. And unless they're packing spell peers, this should resolve. Opponent has a delver, which I'll gladly voltage surge, I think. Could keep Surge as an answer to Haughty Jin once we make an artifact, maybe, and then keep the Abrade for Delver. But curving Voltage Surge into Hearse is probably good enough. And then Hearse will make it so Haughty Jin and Tolarian Terror are not a problem. And then Abrade can deal with the Delvers, which are the remaining threats in their deck. So yeah, that's why it's here. Mostly to counter Haughty Jin and friends. But, uh, of course, has a ton of other utility as well. So, yeah, I'm just gonna sit here, make sure the graveyards are clean. Hopefully, eventually cast a Visions, but I don't expect it to resolve. Would love to hit our land drops. Alright, let's see if Visions works. Opponent's gonna make it disappear. Put an upkeep stop to use hers in case her opponent has more instant speed cantrips that they can play afterwards. But make sure it's harder for them to play Tolarian Terror. Okay, let's try again. There's a spell pierce. So same as last time. Now we do still need a fifth land to cast Burn Down the House, so hopefully we can find one to answer terror. Yep, there it is. And there's the Burn Down the House. Opponent goes digging with Thirst. They've already played a Soaring City, which is another potential way to bounce Hearse here. And sure, we'll let the Consider resolve. And then Hearse will take care of the instance. Okay, Mindstone and Weakstone, unlikely to resolve, but um, yeah, I guess we need to flush those counter spells out at some point. Got a lot of expensive non-creature spells that they can spell pierce late into the game. Okay. And then I don't think I want to exile Tolarian Terror since we can maybe get it back. One potential concern is our opponent playing Terror and having protection afterwards. And yeah, opponent concedes. I'm sure they have a handful of haughty gins that don't have any power, so that's why Unlicensed Terrors is so important in these matchups. 
So, yeah, we get to rank up here to Diamond. So this Mono Red Visions of Phyrexia deck seems to be working out quite well. It's got plenty of answers to creature decks, but can also grind against some more controlling strategies. And a turn to Hearse will help in the Mono Blue matchup, which can otherwise be pretty tough. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.